What's up guys, it is Ozzy from Oz Talks Hardware and this is a different type of video. I probably will not be showing my face because this is more of a tutorial than anything else. I know a lot of you ask me how do you overclock CPUs like the Athon X4845 which have a locked multiplier. And so this video is a tutorial on how to do so. As you can see here, I currently have my Athon X4845 overclocked to 3.95 gigahertz. It fluctuates around there, but as you can see, this is over the stock turbo multiplier of 3.8 gigahertz. It is not a huge bump, but it is a bump nonetheless. Of course, this doesn't only apply to only the Athon X4845. This can apply to other socket AMD CPUs. Uh, the BIOS may be a little bit different depending on what socket that you have, but the principles are the same. So before we start, there are a few things that you will need. This is a list of software that I use when I generally overclock my CPU. Prime95 will stress test your CPU to see how stable it is. CPU-Z is what I just used to show you guys my overclock, so you can monitor your CPU specs and the overclock. HW Monitor monitors your temperatures, and Cinebench R15 and Unigen Heaven 4.0 are just benchmarking tools to see how well your CPU is performing with that overclock. And it also tests stability as well. So before I dive into the tutorial, I do want to give you guys a quick crash course on CPU clock speeds, just so you know what you are doing to your CPU and your motherboard when you overclock something. So basically there are two core things that make up a CPU's clock speed. There's a front side bus slash the base clock, and then there is the multiplier, and these two work hand in hand to make your CPU's clock speed. Generally speaking, the multiplier will multiply the front side bus or base clock a certain amount of times to get it to what the clock speed is. So my Athlon 8845 has a clock speed of 3.5 gigahertz. Its base clock is 100 at stock, and its multiplier is 35. So as you can see, if you multiply them together, 35 times 100, you get 3,500 megahertz, which is the same as 3.5 gigahertz. When you have an unlocked CPU, what you can do is easily just change the multiplier. So if I change this to 37, then my new CPU clock speed will be 37 times 100, 3.7 gigahertz. But when you have a locked CPU, your multiplier is locked, so you cannot change it at all in the BIOS. So what we found out, or what we do, is we can change the front side bus or the base clock speed. So we leave the multiplier alone and say we change this to 105. So now our new CPU clock speed is 3.675 gigahertz. So that is a different way to overclock. And since our CPU, the Athlon X4845, has a locked multiplier, we will be using the front side bus or the base clock to overclock. Okay, so now we can finally commence with the overclocking tutorial. So the first thing you wanna do is check for stock stability just to get rid of any discrepancies when you're overclocking. You should especially do this if your CPU is less than a month old, but if it's older than that and you're pretty sure about the stock capability and stability about your, of your CPU, then you can definitely skip this part altogether. But if you're not quite sure and you just wanna test it just in case, then you should open Prime95 and also open HW Monitor. I can type. So what you should do here is do a blend test for about 10 to 15 minutes and also do a small FFT's uh, test as well for about 10 to 15 minutes. And then if you have no crashes and if your temperatures are okay, then you are ready to overclock. And of course, I'm already set with what I need to do. I know that my CPU is good at stock, so I'm not going to do this, but make sure you just do that for about 10 to 15 minutes for both and then you're set to go. So now that you're done checking for stock stability, restart your computer and get into the BIOS. All right guys. So here I am in the BIOS, and the very first thing that you want to do is make sure that your BIOS is running at its default settings. And for an ASRock motherboard, what you do is you go to exit and you click load UEFI uh, defaults. And I've already done this, so I'm not gonna do it again, but once you do that, make sure you save changes and exit and then re-enter your BIOS. All right, so once that's done, the next thing that you want to do is make sure you turn off all of your underclocking slash power management utilities on your motherboard. Basically, when all of your CPU's cores are not being fully utilized, your motherboard will automatically underclock your CPU by changing and decreasing its multiplier. But when we overclock, we do not want that to happen. So you have to turn off all of your power management utilities. Basically, all AMD CPUs have the same utilities, but depending on the BIOS, you have to search for them. Fortunately enough, if you guys have an ASRock motherboard and it's UEFI, it's, the format is pretty much the same. So what we're gonna turn off is 
Core 6 package and cool and quiet. So make sure you disable those because those are both underclocking and power and efficiency utilities. And what you also want to do is go to overclock tweaker and you want to turn off spread spectrum. And you also want to turn off AMD's application power management. So now that all of those things are turned off, you are ready to overclock. So this is the part where it kind of differentiates depending on what BIOS you have. If you have the same BIOS as me, then that's awesome because you will just have to follow this step by step. But what you want to do is you want to make sure that you can actually adjust your CPU's multiplier or front side bus. So if you have an overclock mode, make sure you turn that to manual. If you don't, you're going to have to look through it a little bit. It's probably in your CPU's advanced or configuration settings. So go look for it and make sure that's set to manual. And now once you do that, you'll see that you have this pop up. This is the front side bus that I was talking about earlier on in the video. So if you change this, if you up it up, up it up, how oh, that's funny. If I change this into maybe 120, then my CPU frequency will change accordingly. Right now it's stock at 100, depending on the CPU, it could be at 200, it could be at 150, it just really depends. But just make sure you have that uh, set up. The next thing that you wanna do is you want to go down to multiplier voltage change, and you wanna change that to manual as well, just so we can change the voltage if our CPU needs any extra juice. Of course, under this, there are more settings. Uh, you can also change the front, I'm uh, not the front side, the north side bridge and the south bridge. And you can also change your APU's PCIe voltage if you have an APU, and you can change your RAM's frequency and timing. But we're not going to get into that as of now, we're just focusing on the CPU. I do for one brief moment want to talk about AMD's Turbo Core technology. Basically any CPU made in the last five or six years will have a turbo clock speed where it automatically overclocks your CPU by itself at stock if your CPU cores are being utilized. What this means basically is that you have two different multipliers. You have your stock multiplier and then you have your boost core multiplier. If you want to overclock, you have two options. You can leave this on and then you would automatically use your X38 multiplier. For unfortunately, this does come with a few grabs. One of them is that your CPU and your motherboard would still automatically underclock itself if it comes into a time where its CPU cores are being underutilized. Of course, it will not underclock itself as badly as when you have the Core 6 on or as you have the AMD application power management enabled, but it will still underclock itself nonetheless. If you do decide to disable this, then you will only have one multiplier. This means that you will not be under the discretion of your motherboard to underclock your CPU. But this also means that you probably won't get as high as a, of an overclock because your multiplier is uh, automatically lower by default. Generally speaking, I like to keep this on just because it gives you a higher multiplier and so you get a better overclock. So now that we're done with all of that, we can officially overclock our CPU. So there are several ways to do this, but of course, since this is a lock CPU, we are going to be using the front side bus. Uh, make sure you are aware of the range of your front side bus. You do not want to go over this because bad things can happen. And range is different depending on the CPU that you have. Right now, mine goes up to 136, as you can see, and it's stock at 100. So what I like to do is go with increments of five. So I'm going to change this to 105, and I I am going to save it, save changes, and then it will automatically restart. Basically, if this boots back up perfectly fine into Windows, that means that 105 is a good frequency to start at. So as you can see, my computer failed to boot to Windows properly because the front side bus was clocked too high. So what I'm going to do is go back into my BIOS and under uh, clock that front side bus a little bit. So I'm gonna change it from 105, whoops. I'm going to change it from 105 to 104 and see what happens. Basically, this is the routine that you want to use when you are overclocking a lock CPU. You want to start off by going with increments of five, and if it's a bit too high, then you want to clock it down a little bit. As a, and see, we have success here. Uh, 104 seems to be working just fine as of right now. At least we're booting into Windows. And yep, it booted just fine, and I will show you guys just how fast the CPU is right now. So as you guys can see, the computer successfully booted up using the 104 front side bus. And as you can see, the multiplier is at 35 right now. As I said earlier, it can fluctuate if you uh, turn on AMD's Turbo Core technology, but it is overclocked slightly to about 3.6 
3.4 gigahertz. With the Turbo Core multiplier, it will be around 3.95 gigahertz. All right, so now that you guys have overclocked your CPU for the very first time, you do want to test it a little bit just to make sure you have some sort of stability. So what I usually use here is just Prime 95. I do two different types of tests. I do the blend test because that tests the entire system and then I use the small FFTS test just to stress test the CPU. I do each for about 30 minutes and if I get no crashes or any weird spikes or anything weird happening or smokes building up in my computer, then I think I'm good to go to continue and overclock it a little bit more. So yes, what this means is that overclocking does take a little bit of time, but just to ensure stability, you do want to go through these tests and I promise you they will make it worthwhile. So once you're done with these tests, you can go back into the BIOS and try to overclock it some more. You also want to make sure when you're stress testing that your temperatures are good, which is why we have HW monitor online because of monitors temperatures. Of course, you're, you are going to need to do a little bit of research to see what the maximum temperature threshold is for your processor. I know for mine, it's about 72.6 ish degrees Celsius. So if I'm under that while I'm stress testing, then I'm I'm good to go right now i'm idling from 40 40 to like 48 degrees ish celsius which is perfectly fine as long as i'm under that 72.6 threshold so just keep an eye on your temperatures while you are stress testing because you do not want it to start throttling and even worse auto shut down because it cannot ha handle the heat that is being dissipated Okay, so say that you were satisfied with your last overclock and you're good to go. Well, then you're good to go and you don't really need to watch this part of the video. But say that you want to push your CPU a little bit more. So you want to go back to 105 and work from there. Well, basically, if you start hitting a wall, as we did with 105, what you can do is add more volts to your CPU, which is basically adding more power. So what you want to do is go to here and you want to go down two clicks and choose that. You do not want to jump in voltage because that can cause a lot of issues with your CPU and could possibly permanently damage it. Generally speaking, I like to go two clicks with my voltage, test it out. If I hit a wall, I'll go back and I'll add a little bit more. Of course, do not go crazy with your voltage and read up what is the safe voltage for your CPU. For the FM2 series, generally speaking, because they eat up a lot of watts, you can go up to about 1.5 with it being generally safe. But of course, this changes with different architectures and with different CPUs, so make sure you research it a little bit. On top of that, since your CPU is eating more power with more volts, it is, of course, generating more heat. So make sure that your cooling is up to par and you're good to go. All right, so now that you have the overclock that you want, you do want to stress test a final time, and this one will probably be a little longer than the last one. You do want to use Prime 95 again, and you do want to use the blend and the small test for about an hour each. The more, the better. You can never really over stress test your computer. On top of that, I do recommend using Cinebench R15 to stress test your CPU again, and to also see how well it performs with your new overclock on hand. Lastly, we have Unigen Heaven 4.0, which will stress test and utilize pretty much every single component in your computer. And I recommend doing this again to see if your overclock really did make that much of a difference in terms of gaming and also to stress test your CPU once again. Keep in mind that you also want to monitor your temperatures. You want to make sure that they are under the maximum threshold of your CPU. I know stress testing kind of sucks and it can take a lot of time, but it is very, very vital when you are overclocking. A CPU can do a billion different things in one single second. And so that means that some things will fall through the cracks. A couple of glitches might fall through the cracks. So it's best to just over stress test than to under stress test. And in case that it does crash, all you got to do is go back into your BIOS, maybe either add a little bit of voltage or underclock your CPU just a tiny bit and then stress test it once more to see if it's stable. All right, guys, so that's it for this video. If you found it helpful, give it a like and share it with your friends that are also looking to overclock their logged AMD CPUs. If there's anything that I can improve on in terms of tutorials and how-to series, just let me know. I try to go kind of in-depth in this one just so you guys can understand the little science behind overclocking to a certain extent. So again, if you guys liked it, give it a like, loved it if you subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out. Yeah.